So here are the two questions I would like you to think about. Compared to the language that we know, which is Python, how similar is our target language C and where are those key differences? Now I'm going to give you my perspective on this. The portion of Python that we have seen and the C programming language are both similar in the following sense. They are both what we call imperative in style. What does this mean? Well, it means that you know, we have a fixed order in which statements operate. And we can control that order as programmers using control structures like if, else, and while. And you will see these keywords in the C programming language as well. And then we have seen statements like assignment statements that have side effects. So there are many similarities between Python and C in this regard. But there are also important differences. We haven't actually explored the whole of the Python programming language. And it turns out you can write Python code that is object-oriented in nature and also functional in nature. We have only very briefly seen examples of object-oriented Python code when we, for example, call methods on certain objects. But there is much more here for you to explore in a later course. Another very important difference is that Python variables are dynamically typed and the language is interpreted. Now, I will explain these terms as we proceed. But in contrast to this, C is statically typed. So, for example, we have seen that when we have a Python variable x, at a certain point in the code, that x could be of type int. Later in the code, that same variable x could be of type string. Why is that? Because we have seen that a Python variable is really like a label and we can attach it to an object of type int at one point in the code and reattach it to a different object, maybe of type string, at a later point in the code. We cannot do this in C. C is statically typed, which means that when we say we have a variable x of type int, it is fixed to be of type int, at least for that portion of the code. Further, as we shall see, C is a compiled language. When we want to execute a C program, we take our C code and run it through this special piece of software called a compiler, and that will produce another file called the executable code. And that is the code that we will run. There are many other differences between compilation and interpretation, which I am going to defer for now. Finally, as I mentioned to you, just because certain terms look familiar to you from Python, don't assume that they mean exactly the same thing in C. We will see that, for example, basic data types like int and float behave quite unexpectedly in the C programming language. And there are many other aspects of these two languages that we will gradually explore over the course of our next few lectures. In addition to this, which is my perspective, feel free to ask, let us say, ChatGPT what it thinks you should focus on. So in this case, I mentioned to ChatGPT, I'm an intermediate level Python programmer. After all, I'm not a beginner. We have learned quite a bit together. And what are some of the key similarities and differences that I, that I should be aware of because I want to now learn C? And of course, ChatGPT gave me a very long answer, which I would encourage you to uh, read in full. But it does tell me some things that perhaps I would like to ask follow-up questions on. So for example, it tells me that if I move to the C programming language, this will expose me to a lot of new concepts around things like performance optimization and system level programming. And I might be interested in understanding what do these things mean? Well, feel free to ask your generative AI tools to explain this for you.